Hi guys, in this video we are going to discuss the problem B of code forces round 842 dev2. The problem's name is quick sort and the problem states that we are given a permutation P of length n and a positive integer k where k is less than or equal to n. In one operation we can choose k distinct now elements P1, P2 up to so on to Pk. So they can be any elements, it's not like they have to be consecutive or something. Any of the k elements from that array we can pick up. We can remove them, uh, remove them, sort them and add them to the end of the array. So for example, over here they have provided us with the array 2, 5, 1, 3, 4 and k is equal to 2. So if we choose the uh, choose 5 and 3 as the elements, so over here k is 2, so we can choose any of the two elements. So they say if we choose 5 and 3, so initially they will take both of this, uh, these elements out, we will sort, sort them, so the relative order would be 3 and then 5. And at the end of the array, we'll be adding 3 and 5. So we have to find the minimum number of operations required to sort the permutation in increasing order. It can be proven that it there always is a way to do that. So that's pretty trivial. Uh, other than that, they have provided us, they have given us the definition of permutation. So that's pretty straightforward. I won't be going through that. And then they have given us the number of test cases. So that's 10 to power 4. Their description of the test cases follows is that uh, the first line would give us two integers n and k, so n is the length of the array, and k is the number of elements we can pick in a single operation, and then they have given us the entire permutation. It is also guaranteed that p is is a permutation, so they have granted that. So it's not like you'll have something like one, three, five. If you're having three elements, they would be a permutation of one, two, three itself. At the end, we have to return a single out, single integer as the output. That would be the minimum number of operations required to sort the permutation. All right, guys. So with that, let's get started. So what they're saying is that uh, we'll be having a certain array. So let's take their example. I'll say. So let's uh, take this particular example. So in this particular example, they have given us one, three, two, four, and k is equal to two. So with this example, the final output or the sorted array definitely is one, two, three, four that everyone knows but what would be the number of uh, like operations we'll need to perform let's say we perform a single operation over here like in one operation we can select two elements so in the first operation i'll be selecting three and four when once i'll select three and four my array would become one and two because three and four are in, dif are in, in a different state right now and th then i'll add it to the end so my array becomes sorted in single operation so i'll have to return one but this is how we can see and uh, predict the answer. How would we develop an algorithm for this? So what we can say is that the relative order over here matters, right? So if I'm having a one at the beginning itself, so I need not disturb it. So one is already at the right position. I'm not going to disturb it. What about two? Now, if we see two, we already have seen one before it, right? So one is coming after two. So we won't be also disturbing that. What about three? 3 is coming after 1, but it it doesn't have 2 before it. So we know that 2 is less than 3. But when we see 3 from the left hand side, we haven't seen 2. So that means some sort of uh, like some sort of operations would be required over here. So some sort of operation would be required for 3. That we already know. So 4 is still fine. We don't need to do anything about it. But since we had to select k is equal to 2, that's why I selected 4. So when we'll get out of the loop, we'll know that, okay, so there was just one element that requires some sort of operation that is three. Cool. So let's try, uh, we got the idea. Let's try one more uh, like example. So over here they have given again, K is equal to, and the example is two, three, one, four. Cool. So with this example, let's try to understand. So we start from the left at the first location. We see, okay, I have a two, but do I have a one? If I'm seeing a two, I should have seen a one already. No, I don't have a don't have a one. So let's keep a count of the number of elements that are not valid. So now I say, I come to three. Have I seen a two? I had seen a two, but it itself wasn't valid, right? So I would count this as well. Now I'll come to one. One is always valid because it, it can be the first integer. So I'll not count this. Then I'll come to four. For four, I'll say, have I have I seen anything that's uh, less than four? Yeah, I have seen three, but it's uh, that also wasn't valid. So I'll say I'll pick four as well. So in total, I need to perform operations for three elements. In a single operation, I can have two elements. 
so the number of operations required would be three to sealed so in other words i can a better way of doing a seal operation in any programming language is basically three plus the divider so the divider over here is two minus one this is a better way of doing the seal operation whenever you're going trying to do a floor operation so you can simply do an integer division a by b that itself actually truncates the decimal points so you get a floor division but whenever you are trying a seal divi uh, seal division you can go with this method so where i'll get three plus one divided by two is equal to four divided by two is equal to two so i think this particular algorithm would work right now how do we code it so if i try to see every element that was present before it right so the solution would become an order of n scale solution and since the num uh, since we require order of n or order of n log n solution for order of n scale it will give a tle so we can't proceed with that so what i can say is i can set a previous element let's say i set a previous element to 0 then i can iterate over the entire array so i'll be going from i is equal to 0 till the time i is equal to i is less than n i plus plus a basic for loop then i'll see that if my current element so let's say arr i is equal to equal to previous plus one so what previous plus one means is that i have at least seen one la less element than this so if i'm standing at one i'll say that have i seen zero so that's why i'm putting the dummy value as zero over here so that at least for one it becomes true when i'll be searching for two i'll say that have i seen one before me when i'll be searching for three i'll say have i seen two before me all of that stuff so if array of i is equal to previous plus one then i can say if the previous element has been seen and i won't be changing its location so then over here i won't be doing anything but i'll update my previous to array i else count plus plus at the end you can just simply return count plus k minus one divided by k that's it so this would give you the valid answer I think this was a simple question however this intuition was required if it clicks then it was easy if it doesn't then maybe you could have struggled with it for quite some time however let's uh, like the explanation is pretty lucid I guess so let's look at the code so let's look at the code for this okay over here you can see I've done the exact same thing I've taken the array then I've uh, traversed it and the previous is already set to zero then I've checked if it's the previous plus one is equal to the current element then I'll be setting up the previous equal to the current element right and over here what I have done is that I have not taken a count so instead of taking a count I have actually subtracted previous from n itself that would actually give me the same result so it's uh, it's equivalent to say that else count plus plus but this actually saves uh, some time coding so I use this particular logic at the end I've just returned the seal value of n minus p plus k minus 1 so I guess the explanation was clear and the code was also neat so if you still need any help let me know in the comment section below thanks a lot guys